Hello everybody and welcome to Chrono Plays in the Real World. How is it in the real world if I'm sitting here playing Don't Starve? Well, would it surprise you to know that I'm playing on my tablet right now and I'm actually recording on my tablet right now? No, it probably wouldn't surprise you if you actually read the title of this video, but yes, I got my hands on an NVIDIA Shield tablet. So I'm actually playing this game streaming from my PC to my tablet and I'm recording on my tablet as well which is really cool. As you can see, I'm using the tablet as a screen and I have the Nvidia Shield controller to control it. It's actually pretty badass to be perfectly honest. What is the Shield tablet? Well, it's advertised as the ultimate tablet for gamers. Well, I can't say about the ultimate part, but it most definitely is a tablet for gamers, and it is quite impressive. It has some pretty serious power behind it. It's got a quad-core 2.2 gigahertz processor built into it with 2 gig of dedicated RAM. I've seen gaming rigs that are less powerful than that. Granted, not for a little while, but still, I have seen gaming PCs that are less powerful than that. Now, for the most part, the Shield tablet is based around this Shield hub here. Basically, what it is, it's NVIDIA's little entranceway into your games. So we have up at the top, we have a shop where you can actually go around and buy things, which is really cool. We have news, which seems to be pretty much exclusively based on Shield news. Okay, that's not necessarily a problem. We have... Android games, which are the games that are actually on your tablet right now. We have media apps, because this thing's not just for games, this is for full media consumption. So we have, of course, Play Movies and TV, which is Google's thing. You can buy movies and TV shows off of the Play Store. We have Plex, which didn't actually come pre-installed, but this thing's smart enough to recognize that Plex is a media app, which is really cool. We have YouTube, of course. We have Play Music, which is Google's music player thing. We have Twitch, which is totally not surprising considering what this tablet does. Now, you might be wondering, oh, well, well, what if I have something that this thing isn't recognizing? What if I download a media app that this thing doesn't know what it is? Well, conveniently, there's an add button up at the top here, and you, you can basically just go through and check box which app you want to add, which I really like. Gotta respect something that doesn't pretend that it knows everything. All right, we have Grid Games, which is actually really cool concept. What it is is games that are on NVIDIA servers that you can stream to your tablet, apparently for free, because I haven't paid a cent and I've almost beaten Psychonauts. Now, I can't do it right now. I can't use it right now. There seems to be something going on. I'm not sure if it's the servers or if it's my internet connection, but I can't stream games right now. It just kind of goes into perpetual loading. So I don't know what's going on there. I'm hoping that it will be fixed at some point, but it wasn't working yesterday either. So I don't know exactly what that means. We also have PC games. Now, this is the selling point of the Shield tablet. These PC games are my PC games. They're all on my PC. And I can play them streaming from anywhere. Even, like, from not at home. I was sitting here playing Don't Starve at work the other day. Just testing it out, of course. And it works surprisingly well. I've noticed a little tiny itty bitty bitty bit of delay in the controls. But so far, I haven't had a problem in a game because of that delay. I think I might have problems taking advantage of a few glitches that I know about in games because they're based on speed, but it might also be that those glitches were fixed in an update to said game, and I'm, I'm not 100% sure about that. So this is all pretty cool, and... The first thing you might think is, oh, that's great and all, but it just keeps you in this shield hub thing. It's like the Amazon tablets from back in the day where you 
only could play in Amazon's garden. Not in this case. We have full Android 5.0.1 Lollipop to play in. So you have access to all of the apps, not just what NVIDIA lets you get at. Even the store, even the NVIDIA store that's on there is just shortcuts to the Google Play Store. So you don't have to worry about giving in NVIDIA your credit card number and having another company that you have to worry about if you already have a Play account. If you don't have a Play account and would have rather trusted NVIDIA over Google, well, can't help you there. But if you already have a Play account, you don't have to worry about giving your credit card information to somebody else, which is always really cool. Now, as I said, this tablet is for gaming, and you can actually tell just by looking at it. Like uh, on the front here, on this bezel here, these are forward-facing cameras, or forward-facing speakers. Now, you might not think that's a little, you know, you might not think that's important, but it is when it comes to gaming. Having forward-facing stereo speakers is really useful when most other Android devices have always had rear-facing single speakers. So I, I actually quite appreciate that they put forward-facing speakers on here. It's really nice. We also have a forward-facing camera, which is a 5-megapixel camera. We also have a, for some reason, rear-facing camera, which is also a 5-megapixel camera. Not 100% sure, but there's a reason I said that it's a media consumption device and not a media creation device. Even though it does have a lot of creative tools built into it. For example, what I'm using right now to record the screen is not a special output or anything. It's the share button right here, which is really cool. You can stream directly to Twitch. You can set up an auto record, which is really neat, and you can set up a manual record. So I can just tell it to record, and that's exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm I'm recording the screen on my tablet, which is really nice. And we can also hit take a screenshot, which I appreciate that there's a specific button for take screenshot and that it's not when if it takes a screenshot, it's not taking a screenshot of the buttons here because Android does have a screenshot function when you hit the power button and volume down simultaneously, but it is really hard to get to actually work properly. So I appreciate having a separate screenshot button, which is really nice. So this tablet wasn't just designed for gaming, it was designed for people like me who actually record their gaming, which is really cool. Um, as you can tell, I really, really like this tablet. However, as with everything, there are a few things I do not like about this tablet. And they all consist of the top of this tablet. We have a micro SD slot, which is really nice. I love the fact that you can have your own external storage, but getting to the micro SD card is actually quite difficult. Getting the top open is annoying just in general, but getting the SD card in and out is impossible without tools or just really long fingernails. And even then, I'm not even 100% sure if they would work if you had really long fingernails. They, your fingernails might be too wide to fit in the hole. But basically what it is, is if I try, if I stick my finger in there, I can't even touch the micro SD card, let alone push it down enough to pop it out. Same with putting it in. I couldn't push the micro SD card in far enough for it to latch. Now I'm going to I'm going to guess that they did that so it's all low profile so that it once it's covered up it's that's it you don't even notice that it's there so I'm going to assume that they mean for you to put a micro SD card in and leave it in so it's not a big problem it's an annoyance however the buttons here those are a problem the power button and the volume rocker have absolutely zero tactile feedback so you're never really sure that you actually push the button. Which I guess is okay since it only happens every once in a while. But you push it 
and you just don't feel like the screen is doing anything. But those are my biggest complaints about this. Um, I do have a few other absolutely minor complaints, but they're expected because, you know, we're talking about the PC Master Race here. Yes, I'm using the term ironically. But we are talking about PC gamers here, and we're used to a little bit of fiddling when it comes to our games. Now, there are some really cool things in this, and, well, some of them are right here, actually. We have a full headset jack, so just like your cell phone, with stereo headphones and a microphone, standard headset jack at this point. We have a mini HDMI jack, which is actually really cool in my situation, because I don't have a mini or a micro HDMI cable anymore. I gave that to somebody who could actually use it because I couldn't at the time. But I do have a mini HDMI cable. But the problem there is that it seems to be protected by HDCP. Now, I can't confirm this by actually finding information on it anywhere, but every time I try to plug it into my recorder, I get this green flashy insanity of encryption and the pc itself doesn't show anything the only thing that shows up is the direct hdmi pass through and it's encrypted and disgusting and doesn't work which confuses the hell out of me because as i pointed out earlier we have a share button and i've been recording the screen i've been recording the screen for over 15 minutes now without a problem so I'm very confused as to why HDCP would be on there. Like, I could understand if it would try to prevent you from outputting to HDMI for recording if you, like, throw in a video or something, a movie. But just in regular use, I, I don't get it. Hmm. One would think that there would be a setting somewhere, which I have not found, and I did go looking for it, where you could disable HDCP like you could on the PS4, that would prevent you from playing HDCP encrypted video, but still let you record everything else. Because there's plenty of stuff that you're perfectly allowed to record, like for example, Don't Starve. The developers are quite happy for people to be playing their game on YouTube and the like. So yeah, I don't understand that. Confuses the hell out of me on that one. Hmm. But outside of a few little confusing things, I do very much enjoy this tablet. The tablet itself costs $300. Now, it's got a bigger brother with twice the storage. This has 16 gig of storage. That one has 32 gig of storage. And the bigger brother has LTE connectivity, whereas this one only has Wi-Fi. But it costs $400. I, don't, I wouldn't be using the LTE connectivity. And the storage space isn't really a big concern since we're streaming most of our games. So I didn't really feel the need to pay the extra money for it. I can see why some people would. I personally just don't feel the need. The controller, however, is a separate device. Um, it comes at $50 approximately, but it is a really nice controller. It seems to be based slightly on the PS3 controller and slightly on the Xbox 360 controller. You can see that the thumbsticks are all down, like the PlayStation controller, but you can definitely get a 360 vibe coming from it. Uh, and really the only other thing that reminds me of the PS3 are the shoulder buttons and the triggers. They feel like the PS3s. They're not shaped like the PS3s, but they feel like it. And I basically say that because I don't like the PS3's controller, or at least the shoulder buttons. I, I really do not. But outside of that, it's got a lot of 360 going for it. The D-pad is like the 360, so basically kind of, eh. Doesn't bother me, but I can see how it would bother other people. We have Y, X, B, A, so basic, you know, Xbox buttons. You know, nothing terribly weird about that. What's weird is in the center. Now, up at the top here, we have special buttons that are all touch sensitive, so there's no tactile feedback when you push them. But we have this center button here, this NVIDIA eyeball here, which is actually just a button to go to the uh, Shield Hub. So it will instantly bring up the Shield Hub. It's kind of like the uh, PS3 home or the PS4 home button. Um, but yeah, so we have 
the standard Android controls. We have a back button and we have a home button. We also have a play pause button. At least I'm assuming it's a play pause button. I've never actually watched video on this thing. I usually just use it for gaming. So it's always been a start button for me. So yeah. And then down here we have volume down, volume up, which is really awesome. You control the volume remotely. I quite enjoy that. We also have a trackpad. So it's like a touchpad, like on a laptop or stuff or something. Uh, but it doesn't do the tap to click. You actually press down the entire pad to click, which struck me as a little weird. And it was a little off at the beginning. It took me a couple of seconds to realize that. But I can understand why they did it. And I actually prefer that, honestly. The way you play games with this, I would prefer a slightly harder press to click. So that's okay. No argument for me for there. Now, on the back here is actually the coolest thing about this controller. Out of all of the really cool things, this is the coolest thing. The headset jack actually overrides the tablet. So if I plug in a headset into the controller, it acts like I plugged it into the tablet. So all of the audio will be sent wirelessly to the controller. Now that's really cool, but it's even cooler when you realize that this controller is not Bluetooth. It's Wi-Fi direct, so it's a little bit more powerful than Bluetooth. It's also a little bit more power hungry than Bluetooth which gets to one of the downsides of this tablet. It's not a bad downside of the tablet, but it is still a downside of the tablet. The tablet's battery is a 19.75 watt hour battery. Now, if you don't know what that means, basically it's huge. This is a giant freaking battery, okay? My phone, the Nexus, or the Note 4, which I mentioned has an estimated 17 days of standby time if set to low powered mode that has a 13.5 watt hour battery i think it's 13.5 somewhere around there so this thing has approximately six watt hours more than my phone so that's a pretty honking battery However, the battery seems to last for about three hours when you're actually playing. Not surprising and not a huge problem, but if you're trying to take this on a trip somewhere, like on an airplane or on a train or something, it could be a problem. Uh, however, it does have, it does charge over its micro USB cable and it comes with a high powered USB charger. So if you can plug it in, you should be good. So it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Of course, you could also do what I do and I just carry a giant freaking external battery. I just, yeah, huge, huge battery for backup power. So it's not a big problem. The controller is the exact opposite. I have no idea how big the battery in this thing is, but I've charged the tablet at least five times and I don't think I've used a third of the battery in the controller yet. So the controller lasts forever. The tablet doesn't. Of course, the tablet is doing a significant amount more. So again, not terribly surprised. And that's pretty much all there is. Well, that's most of what there is to this tablet. You can play regular Android apps and games on it and it does have a few pretty neat little functions to it but there are a few confusing things to it okay so as we can see right here we have chrono trigger my favorite game of like all time as should be obvious now, this is the Android version of that game, specifically designed for Android by Square Enix. But if I try to open it, basically it doesn't, okay? And this is not because I'm recording the screen or anything. It doesn't work anywhere on this tablet. It works on my phone. It does not work on the tablet. 
So yeah, but I can do this. And it works perfectly. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Let's just go with I don't know why it does that, but I would assume that it's actually a problem with Yes, I want to exit. I would assume that it's possibly a problem with the type of processor. This is a Tegra processor, whereas my phone is a Snapdragon processor. So it might be a problem with like the ARM architecture versus x86 or something shockingly similar to that. But that's really the that's like a small problem. As you can tell, I got around that particular problem fairly quickly. So yeah, not that big of a problem, though it is a mildly, mild annoyance because I did buy the Android version. However, I could just play it on my phone without too much of a problem. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all it is for the Shield tablet. What do I think about it? In total, I would say that it's worth the $350 if you're going to be doing some pretty hardcore gaming on it. There are less expensive tablets, but they are significantly less powerful. There are also more expensive tablets that are also significantly less powerful. So yes, I think the Shield tablet is worth the money. If you are a hardcore gamer and you're thinking about picking up one of these, go for it. It is definitely worth the money. So I will end it up here, and I will say to you guys as always, keep playing the game and have fun.